Thank you for tuning again to the Cosign Conversations podcast, where we interview entrepreneurs, creators, professionals that we cosign and want to shine a light onto our community. Today, we have the esteemed pleasure to be here with entrepreneur, fashion designer, stylist. And today, she's actually giving back to women for Women's History Month. We have Martha E. How are you doing today? I'm awesome. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. It's the first time somebody asked that today, so I feel special. <laughs> so kind of tell us what we're doing here today. What made you kind of want to give back to women for Women's History Month? So my name is Martha E. I am the CEO of Amari Boutique and the founder of Amari Cares. And so I just wanted to give back to five CEOs who are women for the month of Women's Month in March. Um, as I was saying earlier to a lot of people that we pretty much tend to make massage appointments, facial appointments. I know for me, I'll make all these appointments and it never go through. And I was like, I'm gonna make myself get a facial and a massage this month. And I'm gonna invite five people with me because a lot of times we tend to just forget about ourselves because we have to take care of everybody else. That's important. Self-care mm -hmm. is definitely important. Um, kind of talk to us because, you know, outside of you giving back with your nonprofit, you also are, are a mother, entrepreneur, you do a lot. How do you practice self-care for yourself day to day? Whew. I try my hardest to get some type of self-care, even if it's just like, me tuning everybody out, going in the room for like an hour or two. It's hard, you know, because I am a mother, I'm a daughter, I'm a CEO, I'm a boss, you know, I'm dating. It's just so much going on in my life right now. So I'll be trying to like get self-care in. It's hard, but it's very important. It's very important to have self-care. It's very important to wind down, to tune everything out and to focus on yourself because you want to do things like that and don't wait till too late till you're forced to do it. So let's treat our, start treating ourselves more and getting the self-care in. For sure. So people know you as being super successful, but there's a lot that go behind the scenes that we don't know about, right? Mm -hmm. Can you talk to us about like the business, uh, you know, of fashion and beauty that people don't see that you've had to actually learn and grow as an entrepreneur? So as an entrepreneur with my business, Amari Boutique, I do marketing. I do, I'm, the, I'm actually the model. Okay. So every week I'm getting makeup done putting on 20 to 30 outfits within like a two hour span, styling, doing photo shoots, doing much more, still fulfilling artists. Like my hand, I'm hands on and everything. And so this is very important, you know, just trying to give back and trying to have self care because I wear many hats. And with the business, I'm very much hands on, especially my business being a multi-millionaire business, it's a lot of orders, a lot of me. So this is just really good. Got you. I like to ask a lot of entrepreneurs and artists that we interview right there. There's always this one point in your career where you're like, man, I can't believe I'm really doing it. Like whether it's, you know, hitting a million dollars in sales and revenue <clears throat> or getting your first paid show as an artist. For you, what was that like that pivotal moment that you were like, man, I, I can't believe I made it? So during COVID, um, I got my warehouse like two weeks before COVID, did not even know COVID was happening. And so, you know how I'm a, I felt like I was a kid in the candy store, like, I got this big old warehouse, like, I want to fill it up. So, didn't know COVID was happening, filled up the warehouse, had so much inventory, COVID happened. Vendors shut down, but I had a warehouse full of inventory. I remember I was so blessed to even give other entrepreneurs inventory so they could sustain. So that's when I hit my first million. And I think once I became an eight figure business owner, that was for my birthday in 22. Okay. I think that's when I was like, I made it. <laughs> Right. Like, mama, I made it. And, you know, it was that moment that my mom was here, my stepdad was here, like my whole family was here at that moment when I hit it. So that was the moment I was like, I made it. And it's just, I give God the glory for everything. I don't take credit for it, even though I, I'm hands on, I still give God the glory. I thank him daily for giving me strength, giving me courage, giving me so much wisdom and comfort to be able to walk in this thing. And that's amazing. Congratulations. Thank um, you. So in two years, you went from seven figures to eight figures. Mm -hmm. What would you say was the secret sauce for that? Because they say you can make seven figures hustling, um, but to, in order to get eight, you got to build like processes, procedures, operations. Like, What was it for you that made that difference between seven, eight figures? I think the difference for me was that I stayed in my lane. I stayed prayed up. I stay prayed up, I tithe, I give God his time, I give God the glory. And another thing for me is I give back. And people don't realize that it's good to take everything in, but you gotta give back, whether it's with non, you know, helping other businesses. Um, I've helped a total of 300 women become business owners as uh, boutique owners and other businesses. So you have to give back. If you just, a person who just receive, 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 and don't give back, you're never going to win. You win by giving back. Mm -hmm. 
Also, uh, I think great opportunity too is through mentorship as well, yes. teaching others, you know, sharing a blueprint. That's that's also amazing. Also, getting them started and helping them along the journey. Uh, who was somebody for you that helped you along your journey that maybe instilled not only entrepreneurship but giving back to you? So I didn't have a mentorship when I started the business because you know people you start asking questions and they think that. Oh, she just want to do what I do. So I didn't have a mentorship. I wasn't blessed to have a mentorship, but I was blessed to have women who were already big and famous to take me under their wing, like Goo Goo Atkins, Miranda Curtis, Tasha Cobbs. Like these ladies were wearing my clothes. They ran my brand. They was supposed to me. So I was just growing and growing and growing. But I've got to say Goo Goo Atkins, she really, really took me under my wing and did everything for my business, posted me daily. Like I saw my followers go from 2000 followers okay. to like hundreds of thousands of followers. I remember the first time she wore my clothes, I was at a very challenging moment in my life. I had $14 left in my PayPal and she had wore an outfit. I didn't even know she was wearing it. And that morning I woke up cause I kept hearing, doo -doo -doo -doo. I'm like, I never heard this before, what is this? <laughs> and I saw my PayPal go from $14 to $4,800. And I was just like, until this day, me and her really good friends, like we became friends. So I didn't have a mentor, but I had women influencing women who really took me under their way and still to this day they rock with me. Now, thanks for sharing that story. That's a very pivotal moment. Um, for me as an entrepreneur, I could definitely resonate. I remember it was 2021. Um, I remember having six figures in my account. I got scammed by an entrepreneur, lost everything. I'm down to wow. like my last hundred dollars. And one of my favorite quotes is, you know, you miss hundred percent of the shots you don't take. So I just really just went went in, started grinding. I made a couple of different pitches, started pitching to businesses and ended up landing another client that let, that gave me five figures in one day. Wow. So Ooh. like, yeah, so like, I'm forever grateful for opportunities like that. People yes. that, you know, believed in the vision, help support you um, early on. What piece of advice would you give to uh, a female entrepreneur who wants to start into the fashion and beauty space that, you know, that you didn't know that you wish you probably wish you knew at the beginning? My idea, what I would give to a female entrepreneurs is who want to start the boutique industry is get up and mentor um, so that you don't make the mistakes that I made, like buying the wrong inventory, spending unnecessary money, just just doing so much crazy stuff like it's so much that's needed in the boutique industry because you can't just take a picture with your camera no more like you got to have a photographer you got to have a mentor you got to have a makeup artist um so that'll be some advice that i give to the ladies and i also when i do my mentorship i also teach them about accounting marketing um having insurance i know you know i went through that tornado and a lot of people was like oh my god how she's gonna bounce back i had insurance mm -hmm. and a lot of people have businesses especially home-based businesses and don't realize that you still need insurance so that's the one thing i do is try to give the important not just about making money but to maintain the money and to keep the money and make sure that you have your business together on the back end in case a tornado or a fire or something like that happen yeah that's amazing because a lot of people didn't have their business together during covid and weren't weren't able to take advantage of the ppp right. eidl because sometimes as a culture we just want to make money and we're mm -hmm. not documenting it. We're not filing our taxes. We right. want to claim a loss. And then, then we had the opportunity to make money. We yes. couldn't. So, so that was definitely, um, definitely unfortunate. We did hear that, you know, you have the opportunity to, you know, gift your daughter a boutique. Mm -hmm. All right. That's, that's so amazing. Um, was that something she wanted to get into or was it an opportunity you no. wanted? To <laughs> she did not want to do it. I had to like lie to her and tell her like, Hey, I want you to do a photo shoot for your 19th birthday. She was like, 19 it's just a number i'll say so i had to keep like persuading her like please just do this i bought all the inventory i took her size out booked the photo shoot did her dba because at that time you know it was dbas it wasn't llc's i did her dba i did all this stuff and i gifted her with the boutique and actually she made five years tomorrow on her golden birthday uh she's turning 24 on the 24 in 24 oh, wow. and it's five years in business and she has been blessed to be a six figure business owner you know she just graduated so that was something i wanted to do for her because um i went through things in my life where i depended on people and i was like i want you to know how to depend on yourself to take care of yourself despite what anybody else do make sure you can do it and we had a lot of losses where i was homeless at one time and i just wanted to give something to her as well as i do stuff for england too mm -hmm. to make sure that you never have to go beg anybody for nothing you never have to want for anything like i want you guys to be set because that's things that my family wasn't able to do you know how the way that we grew up right. so i wanted to do something a little different you know with my girls and still make my mom proud like 
I couldn't do that for her, right. but look how she's taking care of her girls. So I know like one thing my mom always tells me on a daily basis, I love the way you love your kids. Mm, that's awesome. If you had to do it all over again, would you do the same thing or would you do differently? Hmm. Um, that's a tricky question. <laughs> I will say I love what I do so much. I would do it all over again. I think I would start off with doing a little more research than okay. what I did at the beginning, but I would do it all over again. Like I, this has been an amazing walk, an amazing journey. Like even with me being at the top, you know, in 2022, that tornado happened and it was just like, how I'm going to bounce back from that. Right. And it was nothing but God, you know, yeah, I had insurance, but I had God. Right. Yeah. I had insurance, but I tied. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had insurance, but I was favored. So God brought me through. Within three days of the tornado, we had a whole nother warehouse, three times bigger than what we had. So I'll, I'll do it again, That's you know, right. without all the little kinks and, you know, things like that. But yeah. those are things that made me stronger. It made True. me stronger and it made me the person I am today that no matter what happens, no matter what tries to come my way, I know that God is going to cover me. I know he's going to protect me and the weapon may form, but it will not prosper. Hey, we love to hear it. Uh, and it's kind of tying us all together because you have a story of definitely beating and championing adversary, adversity. Um, you mentioned somebody who's co-signed you, helped you go from you know $14 to 4,800 overnight. I'm gonna give you the opportunity since you're here giving back to you know five CEOs, five women entrepreneurs. If you had to co-sign a, a female entrepreneur that somebody should be on the lookout for, who would that be and why do you co-sign her? Mm, so I would say, my, one of my mentees, Jess. Okay. She uh, is one of my mentees who made a million dollars and she's a woman of God, a woman of faith. And I just love her so much because she includes God in everything that she does. So y'all stay tuned for Jess. Jess is doing big things. She just opened a storefront. I'm so happy and I'm so proud of her. But I, if I had to choose anybody, I would say Jess. Jess is an amazing woman of God. She is a praying woman. She is a friend that you can call and say, hey, I need prayer. And Jess will stop whatever she's doing and pray at the same time of being a CEO and being a mother and being a daughter. That's awesome. Definitely. Thank you for your time. Appreciate you sharing your story with us. This is amazing. Thank you for also giving back to women at Coastline. We always support and lift and advocate for women. Shout out to Jess as well, your mentee. Um, before we get out of here, do you have any last words you want to share with the Coastline community? I would like to say keep going, keep being you. Just as always, ask God for peace, prosperity, happiness, and joy. And whatever you put your mind to, you can do it. Keep going. You heard that right here on the Coastline Conversations podcast. Thank you so much. You're